Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geeky Limited Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use if statements within the Swift language. Now what we're going to do is continue on from our previous tutorials within Swift where we created actions and outlets, got our um, button to display text within a label, we had our text fields, enter text and display that within a label and also dismissing the keyboard. We're going to be continuing on from those to use our if statements within this project. So basically what's going to happen, we're going to the main storyboard, we have our text field here that once you press the done button on our keyboard will place text within our label. So if you want to learn how to do that, just go check out our previous tutorial. So we can continue on from this, and what we're going to do is have a button underneath our label. So I'm going to simply place that in now, space that out, and what this button is going to do is basically, if a certain piece of text equals in our text uh, in our text of our label, then equal it to something else in our second label. So basically, how if statements work are they get an object and find its state and then what they would do is perform an action depending on the state of the object else if it's not equaling what we wanted it to it would do something else so basically if our label equaled a certain piece of text so let's say our label equaled apple so we're basically going if our label equals apple then perform this action else if it does not equal apple then perform this action so we're kind of triggering actions depending on the state so it's basically if the state of this is this, do this, else do this, basically. So what we're going to do then is drag in a second label. Now I'll space that out also and make sure that is also centered. So this button here, if I rename it, this would be our what if button. There we go. So what's going to happen then, we're going to implement some text in our text field, place it within our label, then press our button. If our first label equals the text that we wanted it to, it will display a certain piece of text within our second label. Else, if it doesn't equal what we want it to, it will display something completely different in our label. A little bit confusing, but it will become very, very clear once we come to coding it. So what we need to do is get these two objects and then add the missing constraints. Just so it resizes when we work with different views. Then we need to bring up the assistant editor, make sure it's selected on the viewcontroller.swift class. And then we're gonna need to add in our action for our button. Simply add that in there, take off the sender as we don't need it, and make sure it's touch up inside. And I simply name this the what if button, connect that up, and then create the outlet for our secondary label, which I'll place under our first label and simply name it label two. There we go, easy enough to understand. Okay then, so I'm gonna space out now the parentheses on our function button for what if, and it's gonna work very simple. Now creating if statements in Swift is again, like very many of the other things, a lot, a lot more simple. It's all you simply need to do is if, and then the object equal whatever state, do this. Whereas before we had to do if with the brackets and then is equals a string and all sorts of kind of stuff, which was a little bit confusing uh, for you know for beginners, but this is a lot, lot easier. And this is simply how it works. So we type out our if statement. So if space our first label, which is called label.text, is equal equal to the string of let's say apple, like we said before, then perform this action between the two parentheses. So that's very that's really simple. It's just simply if the text of our label is equal to apple, then perform this action, which we're gonna have it say label two, which is the name of our second label, dot text to simply equal the word is apple. So if our first label equals apple, then it's gonna perform the action to our second label to equal the word is apple. Now what do we do, or how do we get it to perform an action if it doesn't equal apple? So what we simply do, at the end of our parentheses there on the action, we simply do space and then write out else. And then again, perform some parentheses. So what's gonna happen then, we're gonna press our button and it's simply gonna read it. If label.text equals apple, then label2.text will equal word. But if it didn't equal apple, it will go if equals apple, and it will say, well, no, it doesn't equal apple. And then it will go else, which is the only other alternative. So if it don't equal um, apple, else it's going to perform label2.text equals the, um, 
quotation marks there, the word is not Apple. It's simply going to display that instead. So again, just to give you a quick rundown. If the label equals Apple, then it's going to perform the action to set our second label to the word is Apple. Else, which is the only other option if it's not Apple, our label.txt is going to say the word is not Apple. Now, before we can even trigger this, we need to kind of interact with our previous function, which is placing the code, or I mean placing the text within our text field and equal it into um, our first label. So the best way to show you is going to build and run. Now, once it's loaded up, we got our new button and label all implemented in. So what I'm going to do is see here, we need to have our first label equal Apple for our first action to even work. So if we type out Apple and then press done, this will place um, the word within our first label, which we did in our previous tutorials. And now we go on to our if statement. So once we press our if statement, if our label equals Apple, it will display this piece of text within our second label. So if we press it, now because it does equal that, which we sell it to, it will simply perform the first action. The word is Apple. Now if I changed it to simply a different fruit, let's say, let's say a pear, and press done, just to show you that it's not just displaying the first piece of um, you know, string within that statement. So now the word equals pear. So this means that it's not going to equal apple, meaning it can't show the word is apple. The only other alternative is else, if it's not, you will simply display the word is not apple. So if you press our button now, and because it didn't equal apple, it now says the word is not apple. Apple. So this kind of if statement function is heavily, heavily used in a lot of applications that you may have seen and you don't even know about. Uh, very commonly used in games, like say, like if the user's completed the first level, unlock the second level. Else, if not, hide the second level from the view. It's basically stuff like that. It's very, very simple statement, but can make a huge impact into the way your application is controlled and run. So that's simply how you create and use and simply understand if statements from within the Swift language. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.